Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Sweetheart by Peter James. So I actually picked this up because my cat picked it as part of my, my cat picks my TBR videos. I'm going to start by reading the blurb. Charlie has a strange feeling when she sees the idyllic mill house with its cluster of outbuildings, the lake and the swirling mill stream. A powerful sense of recognition as if she has been there before except she knows she hasn't. After Charlie and her husband Tom move into Elmwood Mill, sinister memories of a previous existence start to haunt her. Despite both their attempts to dismiss everything with rational explanations, the feeling turns to certainty as the memories become increasingly vivid and terrifying. Charlie is persuaded to undergo hypnosis, but in searching deep into her past, she unwittingly opens a Pandora's box of evil, and now the terror is free. So this was published in about 1990, so it's quite old, uh, especially like for Peter James. I mean, I came across him because of his Roy Grace series, which has predominantly been released over the last 10 years or so. And you can tell that he was less mature as a writer in this one. It also has a lot of similarities with The House on Cold Hill, which is another one of his novels. The Both, both novels are uh, like haunted house stories, and The House on Cold Hill has actually been turned into a play, I think, as well. In this one, we also have some stuff to do with like past life regression and hypnosis, and it all comes together. Now, there were quite a lot of like cliches in this, and the writing wasn't amazing, but there was nothing technically wrong with the writing, and the cliches worked in the in this you know in the in the sense that they were being used inside a haunted house story, which is a genre which kind of needs its cliches, you know. So I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs. So this was quite interesting here. Chinese box, Tom had said with a grin. The Chinese box was a delicacy. You buried a tin full of maggots in the earth with no food. When you dug it up a fortnight later, the maggots would have eaten each other and there would be one left. Fat, juicy, the survivor. You ate him. We have a charity sale and this kid asks how much the cupcakes are. He actually says, how much is the cupcakes? And they're 20 pence, which is absurdly cheap. But again, this was in 1990, so that would be like equivalent to like maybe 50p a pound today. We also have a goldfish in this which I thought was quite interesting because there's a goldfish called Marlon in the uh, Roy Grace books. And so it's just like an interesting kind of quirky little re recurring theme there. Then she realises that in a previous life she killed a dog and uh, then her dog starts acting strange. She ran over, knelt beside him and put her arm around him. Boy, what's the matter? He was shaking and a puddle of urine lay beside him. It's okay, boy, it's okay. She stroked his head and rubbed his chest. There is this like kind of constant sense of unease throughout this, which, you know, I've seen it done to greater extremes, but it was still good enough to keep me going, you know? I have just a throwaway reference to someone having some James Herbert novels. I'm going to read this little bit out because I think this is quite interesting. Some people thought death was okay. They could accept it. Some religions thought it was okay too. She could not. Death of people she knew always affected her badly. Death was evil. It disturbed her, disoriented her. As if the world had been given a half rotation so that instead of looking up at the sky, she found herself looking down into an abyss. She wondered sometimes what it felt like to die, what viola letters had felt plunging down the bank into the water, being sucked under the water. Some man on a television program about death, a jolly, earnest fellow whose name she had forgotten, said drowning was quite a pleasant way to go, actually. It hadn't seemed very pleasant from where she'd stood at the top of the sluice. It hadn't seemed very pleasant when they put Viola Letter's body into what looked like a bin liner. We have this little kind of exchange which I thought was quite cool. Weird things, stars, Hugh said. Do you know them all? Ghosts, he said. I always wonder how many of them are ghosts. He pointed up with his pipe. You're not seeing the stars as they are now. You're seeing them as they were hundreds of years ago. Millions of years ago. Some of them don't exist anymore. You were looking at light they emitted. Images of themselves. That's what I think a lot of ghosts are. Images of dead people, like video replays. And they're having like, problems with the electrics and stuff. All very creepy. Gonna read this little bit out here. Four minutes. After a pregnant woman dies, four minutes is all you have to get the baby out before the baby dies too. That's what the crewman was thinking. She knew because she could read his mind. She could read all their minds as she floated up near the roof of the ambulance, looking down at her body as if she were watching a play from a balcony. Everything seemed far away below, and yet she could hear every word, feel every thought. Feel everything except the pain. There was no pain anymore up here, and that was good. Don't bring me back, she thought. Please don't bring me back into the body. Save the baby, but let me go. No more pain. They have a problem here where someone needs a blood transfusion, and they've only got two O negative matches. And I'm O negative, so there we go. Universal blood type. I thought, I thought this little conversation was interesting. Hugh stood still for a moment. Do you know what I see when I look at the moon, he said. What do you see? Three bags of American urine. 
You're in. She picked up the large rubber torch she had left on the back seat of the Jaguar and they walked towards the steps. That's what they left up there, the first men when they landed. Three bags of urine. He put his arm round her. Why? Her voice had a falsetto tremble. The official reason was to see what would happen to it. I often wonder if it was something different, like dogs and cats pissing over new places to mark our territory. I thought this was typical of like the bureaucracy you sometimes find as well. So this guy's trying to do some research in a library. And uh, so... I thought this was typical of like bureaucracy as well. So Charlie goes off to do some research in a library and she takes a pen out of her handbag. You're only allowed to use pencil here, the woman said. I can sell you one for 12 pence if you haven't got one. So yeah, I don't want to say too much more about it. As I said, it wasn't like the best written book, but it certainly was okay. And uh, the story, I think, was enough to carry it. And then you also have this kind of subplot of what's going on with the family and their relationships as well. And yeah, it was spooky at times. I, you know, as I say, I've read much scarier books. And uh, well, books are kind of a weird one because I don't tend to get scared by them in the same way that movies might get you with a jump scare or something. But um, yeah, there's definitely enough suspense here to keep you going. So I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5 and I thought it was, it was pretty good. So there we have it. That's what I thought of Sweetheart by Peter James. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.